Hey guys, I think we're gonna get started. So uh, for, for those of you I don't know, um, my name is JP Moeller, and I am the, the president of the Harvard Law and Technology Society. I just want to start out by, by thanking everybody for, uh, for coming out to the first annual Harvard Litigation Finance Symposium. Um, uh, so this symposium is actually going to be uh, uh, recorded all the way through. We've got great video recording in the back, so we'll be able to share this with a, with a broad audience um, in the weeks to come. Um, so, so we focus our efforts at, at our student organization, the Law and Technology Society, on kind of myriad of intersections between the practice of law and emerging technologies. And as a result, we, we really felt like we couldn't ignore the cutting edge technical analyses that are driving growth and innovation in, in the litigation finance industry today. Um, so one of the core tenets of our organization is to be constantly examining how the practice of law is changing, how, how the practice of law might change given its continued intertwining with technology, and perhaps most important, how the practice of law should change. Um, we feel strongly it's our obligation as, as scholars, as citizens, as technologists, uh, to use what resources we have available to us to question the status quo in the legal industry and the access to justice that it affords those um, seeking a fair shake. So Robert Mahari, our excellent vice president of, uh, of innovation here, dreamed up this event as a, as a collaboration across scholarship and, and practice to foster a better understanding um, of its impact on, on the financial industry in isolation, but also on, on the justice of, of outcomes under the law more broadly. Um, so enough about us. We'd uh, be remiss if I didn't take the opportunity to thank all of our excellent sponsors here today, uh, Arrowhead Capital, uh, Curium, Validity Finance, uh, Parabellum Capital, uh, Lex Finance, Ethereum, and of course our, our symposium sponsor, Fulbrook Capital Management. Um, thank you so much. With, without your support, uh, we wouldn't have been able to bring together so many diverse voices uh, from across the world, from, from Peru to, uh, to Switzerland uh, together this week. So, <clears throat> you know, it was really striking to me that in, in 2013, just 7% of, of US corporate lawyers reported that their firm had used litigation finance at least one time in the previous year. And then in 2015, just two years later, that had spiked 300% to 28 points. And, and, and we think this is just a small indication of the hunger that investors have really developed uh, for a piece of this, this fast growing pie and that the implications that this growth uh, may have on the legal industry are, are really significant. So we're, we're thrilled to be following this, uh, this growth closely. So without further ado, I'd just like to, uh, to introduce our, uh, our symposiums uh, organizer, uh, Robert Mahari. Thank you so much, JP. Um, and thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for coming out here, uh, taking time out of your busy schedules. Um, it's interesting, because I came to, to Harvard Law School kind of seeking to combine law, technology, and business. And I consider this to be like a synergetic uh, triangle of disciplines. And I think litigation finance, more than many other disciplines, speaks to that kind of combination. And so I'm excited to see um, what we're going to be able to do here today. Um, although we're students, um, one famously repays one's teacher poorly by remaining a student forever. And so we hope that this event is gonna give us the opportunity to give back a little bit and foster the generation of knowledge um, and also support our colleagues who are seeking an interdisciplinary future. Um, to this end, we're recording everything. Like JP said, we'll make that available uh, to interested students. We're hoping that uh, we can push for a course um, dedicated to litigation finance at Harvard Law School. And so I think this will be a rich kind of data set for that. Um, in many ways, what we're creating here is, is more than the sum of its parts. Um, not only are we exploring what I consider to be a fascinating intersection of topics, uh, we're also a very interdisciplinary community. Uh, we have professors from the business school, we have professors from the law school, and as JP mentioned, we have people from all over the world, uh, practitioners and students alike. 
Um, this is also one of the largest litigation finance events at any law school that we're aware of probably in the world. Um, and we're very proud to be able to be taking that first step. Um, I thank you all for taking what I know must be a leap of faith to trust a student organization to put something like this together. Um, I'm excited to see more people trickling in throughout the day. Um, and I'm especially grateful to the academics and the practitioners who took time out of their schedules. Um, this whole thing wouldn't be possible without our sponsors, um, who JP thanked earlier. And um, I'm very, very grateful for your generous support. Um, you know who you are. Uh, some have gone above and beyond to help us not only in a financial sense, but also uh, by, by helping us meet and connect and, and network um, in this uh, very interesting space. And so I'd like to thank uh, Selvin Seidel from Fulbrook um, as one such person. Um, before I welcome him, I'd like to thank you all one last time, and I hope you enjoy your time in Cambridge with us. Thank you, Robert. Um, this is, I think, um, a, 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 an historic event. I mean, Robert and JP have put together something which no one else has done, and it's at Harvard Law School. So the credibility for the industry is going to be monumental. Um, and thank you for all coming, and I think you're going to find this to be a, um, a groundbreaking few days, or two days anyway, because there's so much that's going on here. Um, and I just briefly can tell you that I know what I'm talking about, uh, as Tim will vouch for me. Um, I've been in litigation over 40 years, I've been in litigation financing for the last 10 years, over 10 years, and I've just published a book um, on the subject, and I've lectured here um, on funding for David Wilkins' class. So this is not new for Harvard, but I think it's going to be a historic event to have Harvard's name behind this, especially since they're going to be doing it annually, and especially since these two are actually pushing to get the first class on litigation financing in any law school in the world. So as usual, uh, they're gonna be first, and they will make a difference. So you're uh, all, at uh, what I think is historic. And let me list a couple of the ways, or four of the ways, why I think this is uh, so unique. Number one, it is in technology. And technology is the future of the law. It's becoming very much a part of legal practice. And it is just starting in finance. It's very complicated. And what they're going to have today, and you'll hear later on today, is two speakers um, from the NYU Law School Center for Justice, which has just started a digital library, which is the first in the world. So this uh, technology is going to permeate uh, the industry and the market um, without question, it's very, very complicated. This is the start of it. The second thing is, this is not only for um, practitioners, but it's for students. You're gonna see as the day goes on and students wake up, they will be filtering in, and this is designed for them which is the first time that's ever been done, um, a program for students in law school and in business school. We're now branching out into business school and Robert and JP have put on the program two professors from business school as well as several professors from the law school. 
which you'll be hearing from. That's a breakthrough. It's never happened before. It's going to be happening many, many times where this industry will spread to um, other areas, business areas, finance areas, and some others, which uh, will lead to the, to the last breakthrough, which in my mind this is, and that is litigation finance for the first time since it's really been in the United States since about 2005, I guess. Tim's uh, company, Juridica, started in 2007, and that was early on. Um, so we have had a, uh, a great development, mostly because the story of litigation finance tells itself. So once people get to know about it, uh, which is few and far between over the years, um, the story is compelling. And number two, we have the media, which has very much gotten behind the funding in, a, in an area which has been a bit controversial because we've had, needless to say, some uh, opponents or, of the industry, mostly the, uh, the Chamber of Commerce, which represents the defendants and naturally enough um, opposes funding. But they have been our biggest ally in the sense they've given us media coverage. They've chosen debates which they have apparently lost because the industry keeps growing. And we have a number of media now that are devoted to this industry, Wall Street Journal, the Above the Law, which is a leading uh, proponent or a studier of litigation funding. And we have several others, the Financial Times, the New York Times, the American Lawyer, and so on and so forth. Um, so that has also helped. What does that mean at the end of the day Litigation financing is becoming a career path. That's why it's catching on at Harvard. That's why it will be catching on at other law schools like NYU Law School, which now has a digital library on, um, on finance, the first in the world. And the speakers will be here over lunch, I think, from that library who, who heads the center um, to talk to you about it. But what this means is that people are going through law school with the idea of becoming a litigation finance person directly, God help them, as Wynn would say, <laughs> um, or going to a law firm which focuses on funding there are more and more of the law schools, uh, the law uh, practices, which are becoming funder friendly. In fact, they're becoming partners of uh, funders, like um, Burford has hooked up as a partner with uh, Quinn Emanuel and uh, 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 one or two others. And what that means is that you can have a career in funding by going to a law firm and studying it because it's very complex and becoming a part of that firm's understanding of it. So this is a career path for law students because it has developed the way it has developed. So all of this means that you are in a, a, a really a, a, an unbelievable groundbreaking moment. Um, and we're all lucky f that Robert and uh, JP have formed it. And they're even pushing for a course, which would be the first course ever offered by a law school on litigation finance. That will be, uh, with Harvard's name behind it, that'll be phenomenal. Um, and it may happen this year or next. 
So we'll keep our fingers crossed. But right now, uh, you are going to hear a few panels on the subject, varied parts of the subject that are quite important. And I see and know in the audience we have a varied group of funders, claimants, a couple of students who have woken up and others who will be here later, um, and some people who just want to learn about it because they may find that this is an interesting um, industry to go into, like Rob Ryan, who's come up from New York and wants to learn more about it, is in the fi investor area and may or may not find this to be an interesting investment because it's also overly rich in terms of its rewards, as we'll talk about later. This is a, an industry which charges too much on, uh, uh, when is, is confusing, is protesting, um, charges too much and will in the future make more money by charging less, um, which I'll talk about later on in our panel. Uh, thank you, Wynn. Uh, and that's it. So let's get started with the first panel, if we might. <laughs> 